Hey guys, you're watching the girls here on SSP TV. I'm Janine Lasant. My mom, Debbie, can't be with us on this show. She's actually in Philadelphia because our dog Gucci is undergoing cataract surgery. So we'll have his progress on an upcoming edition of the girls. Uh, today I am honored to have a guest on with me who is battling a very rare form of brain cancer. It's a cancerous brain tumor. And uh, I'm told only 300 people a year are diagnosed with it. Only 1% are said to have survived so far. We are talking about DIPG here on the girls today. And without further ado, I am very honored to have Dana Scanton on with me. Thank you, Dana, for being here. Of course. And also her mom, Lenore Scanton. Uh, thanks Thank for you. being here at the residence in by Marriott. Uh, we're very happy to have you on and uh, talk about what DIPG is all about. DIPG is a diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma. Okay. It is um, on the brain stem of your brain and which is right in the middle of your brain mm -hmm. and uh, it is incurable and inoperable. Now Dana you were 18? Yes. And this was detected back when you were 17? Um, Yes. No. Yeah. Okay. So Sorry. if you can tell us, you know, your story, how did you, what were your symptoms? How did you come to know that you had this? So I was about like six months, seven months pregnant okay. when I found out. And the one day I was walking to um, the bus stop to go to school in, um, in LCC. And um, I noticed that my leg wouldn't pick up when I was walking on my left side and I noticed that I couldn't swallow very well. Mm -hmm. I like kind of forgot to okay. and um, my voice started, I started to lose my voice. So I went to uh, my baby doctor and they told me it's nothing related to the baby. I thought it was maybe her on my nerves or something mm -hmm. and it wasn't and um, so I went to the hospital and um, got a CAT scan and they told me that I have to go get an MRI at the Allentown um, Hospital and the next day they told me I had DIPG. I know it's difficult to talk about. I don't know if you've been sharing your story uh, when I talked to your family. You know they said it's really your mission now to get this out to people and to really help others with what you've been going through. I mean you're yeah. definitely a a strong individual to be dealing with this. You're 18 years old, right? You did give give birth to your daughter, correct? Yes. And she's with us today, little Aries. So we'll yes, meet her later is. later in the show. Um, Mom, what was going through your head at that time? Uh, well, I was I was terrified, of course, and um, basically, I just knew that when the doctor said that uh, it was incurable and inoperable, I just asked that I would get let the whole world know to ask mm -hmm. to pray for her. So mm -hmm. that was in my mind and thoughts. And the, and the prayers began and there's been an overwhelming amount of support from the community and we'll also be hitting on you know how that's helped with fundraising efforts um, underway. So uh, you know this is something that is normally diagnosed to younger children so it was even more of a rare case for Dana. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, normally, uh, children are diagnosed um, between the ages of five and, and ten. Yes, three to five around. Okay, so this is something that that happens in children. Now, your case, where the tumor is actually located, um, they said it's actually intertwined into your brain. Yes, that it's weaved, and then it's um, in the middle of it, so it's malignant. Okay, so from that time that you. Uh, found out that you had the uh, the brain tumor. Take us into what happened next. So you started treatment immediately. They sent you to, ch to CHOP? Mm. No, well, see, they gave us um, a couple options of where we could go mm -hmm. get treatment. But, um, you know, God opened, opened and closed doors for us, and we went right to CHOP, mm -hmm. and um, I got radiation there. and. But I didn't get it until um, around, it was December 26th because I had to go back to the hospital on the 25th. 
and um, I tried not having radiation for as long as I could with areas in my stomach, but my symptoms got too bad. My doctor was like, you need to go now, and I was just like, okay, you know, mm -hmm. and I felt like that was God, like, you know, helping me, like, speak through people, because I had no idea what to do. <laughs> Your faith has really carried you through because you really looked to God through this whole process. Yes, of course. And how has that helped you? <sighs> with everything. My helps me with my anxiety even though I'm like getting choked up right now <laughs> but um, it helped me with you know just keeping my head high and keeping a smile on my face and kept fighting for my daughter. And you're doing a damn well job at that I must, must say. We have Dana Scanton with us on today and her mom Lenore Scanton and Dana is battling a rare form of cancer. It's a cancerous brain tumor called DI. PG. Um, she did, uh, she's sharing her, her story here with us on the girls. We're happy to have her on. And when we come back, we will pick up on our story. Radiation starts. You're not going to believe what happens next. Stay with us. And welcome back. You're watching the girls here on SSP TV. Mom couldn't be with us today because she's taking care of her little Gucci. He had surgery and we will be updating you on his progress. He's going to be a guest on The Girls coming up hopefully this season. I'm honored to have Dana Scanton with us and her mom, Lenore Scanton. We are talking about Dana's um, uh, battle with cancer. It's a rare form of cancer. It's a cancerous brain tumor. It's called DIPG for short. Um, rare diagnosis that only 300 people a year are diagnosed with this. We need to talk about this issue. There needs to be more research on this disease and uh, that's why Dean is on the show today talking about her symptoms, talking about what she's doing to get treatment and later in the show how you can help uh, support this cause. So thank you again. Um, for being on the girls with us and Dana I can't thank you enough for taking some time uh, out of your day and you know being with her I know it's not easy to come out and you know be doing a show like this uh, when you should probably should be resting right it's okay <laughs> or is it nice to be out <laughs> it, it is nice to be out but I feel the need to um, spread the word yeah. for DIPD and all these children they shouldn't be suffering like this there should be more um, more research on this and there's not and I feel very upset about that. Yes and well your message is definitely getting out there because you have a, a following, you have a support system um, and, and things like this will even encourage more people to learn about it and uh, you know support the cause as far as treatment is and support for these families. Um, we, we left off the show talking about you going to CHOP and getting the treatment, the radiation. And when I was preparing for the show and I was uh, talking to your sister, Leanne, um, she was saying that, you know, you, you needed to go through six weeks of radiation. So going into radiation, uh, your symptoms were what? You couldn't walk, you I couldn't, couldn't eat? couldn't walk, barely could swallow. It took me an hour to eat a burger, an hour and, or two hours to eat a burger. Um, I couldn't lift my arm. Uh, nobody understood me. <laughs> my breathing started getting very shallow. Mm -hmm. But um, And then two weeks into radiation, right, you were having remarkable results from this radiation. <laughs> were you surprised? Were you relieved? Like, what was going through your head? I was like, thank you, God. <laughs> I couldn't thank him enough, you know, and it was just a blessing because for the first eight treatments I had Aries in my stomach and I just felt like he was holding his hands over my stomach. So that was a blessing too. And that give you hope? Mom. Absolutely, yes, mm -hmm. yes. And she was such, she was so brave through the whole thing, which was remarkable because she, I know how upsetting it is just to have a child, you know, especially your first child in your belly, and it's kind of scary to have to go through this. And, uh, and with a smile on her face, never complaining, you know, we, we wake up and we complain about the littlest things, and then you see Dana who is going through something uh, that only 1% of the world goes through, and she's just happy and, you know, doing your thing. So. That's amazing, and you say it's God with you, God with you. Of course, he's with me every day. <laughs> She's very every strong. Every day. 
since you came home from the radiation, uh, they said to you, there's not a lot of research uh, for DIPG, right? And then like, now what? We're, what mom, what were you, what, what's going through your head now? Where, where do we go from well, we here? Really, we really only had like two options. Um, well, actually three. There was one, um, they, she could take oral chemo drugs, mm -hmm. which don't work, and they know they, they don't work, so um, it was pointless to do that. There was um, another trial, study trial in New York, uh, but she, she needed to uh, meet those requirements, and uh, the tumor didn't shrink enough, and she didn't have enough radiation, so, so that wasn't possible. And the third was, um, to go to Mexico for, their, they were treating, doing a study trial there on children and they had treated uh, over 60 patients there, 60 children and, and more now. Um, so we decided to try Mexico because it was prolonging life and um, you know, a more qu best quality of life. So. so now you're 18, you have a newborn and now mom and you get on a plane and you're going to Mexico. Yeah every three to five weeks. Every three to five weeks, so you go to Mexico and w what kind of treatment do they give you there? Um, they give me, uh, what is it In called? Intra-arterial chemo, okay. where they go through my main artery, my leg, and then they go all the way up to my brain, release the chemo, and then take it out. And then they um, take fluid out of my spine and insert more chemo in there, because my tumor could spread into my spine. So it's it's a very um, it's very specific pain. yeah very uh, specific. process and very painful. Yeah. Yeah. So you get to Mexico, you get the procedure done, and you come home the next day. Yeah, the next day or the day after that, depending how I feel. She used to spend the night in the hospital, yeah. so we stay there, and then once they release her, we go back to the hotel, and then usually the next day we leave. So every three weeks, imagine this: it's eleven thousand dollars to go for treatment. Now, has it been working? Um, it did shrink, but then my tumor grew about a month ago into my cerebellum. Okay. So. Uh, we go back to um, CHOP in next week for another MRI, which we get monthly to see if there's any um, shrinkage or if any growth is happening. So every month we go for uh, an MRI and then we go back to, for treatment. The last time we were there, it did grow into the cerebellum, but um, she did advise us to go back for treatment again. So we did do that. So hopefully that um, with the a little bit more treatment that they gave her, uh, hopefully it will have shrunk a little. They did um, prescribe an oral chemo. Uh, we haven't tried it yet because she's been so sick. So we're gonna wait until she feels a little better and hopefully um, uh, see if we can get that. And, and hopefully that'll help slow the growth. So we'll be picking that up. But we will be going back to Mexico. We have a, an appointment scheduled for um, October 26th for is our next treatment. So, and, but we are asking for prayers because we know prayers work. We know, we know prayer works. Prayer moves mountains, I mean. And not to mention, I am terrified of MRIs. <laughs> I was so scared of them. That was like my worst fear, and now I get them every month. I'm like, geez, you know? So through this whole uh, experience for you, Dana, if you can share, you know, with our audience how God has, you know, really guided you and helped you through these last several months, because, I mean, you're a survivor. You're sitting here when against the odds saying, you know, uh, if you would not be had any treatment, they were giving three months. If you had treatment, they were giving you nine months. And here we are. And it's, you know, knock on word that you're you're sitting with us today, and God has a purpose for you being here. And I really believe it's to you know spread your message and really get the word out uh, for other children who have the DIPG. I do believe that, and I believe that this was my purpose. I always felt like I had a you know, a really big purpose for God. And, and like, I was so passionate, so, you know, so caring about it. And I didn't even know what it was, you know, and I was so confused. And I mean, like, I used to play the guitar and sing and everything. So maybe I was like, oh, maybe I'll be a Christian singer, spread his word and, you know, share what I have to say about my life. And instead, you know, this happened. And sometimes we don't expect, you know, 
what, what's going to happen to us and we don't expect the right things, but, um, you know. God is always good. Yeah, he is. I, I mean, he's taken me through this so far. And I believe that this is my purpose, to spread the word about DIPG and all these children, because it breaks my heart. Well, you're doing a fine job, Mama, right? Be proud of she her. She is. She's very strong. Very strong. Very passionate, too. Yes. Uh, you're watching the girls here on SSP TV. I'm with uh, Dana Scanton and her mom, Lenore. Very emotional topic as we talk about a cancerous brain tumor. It's inoperable. Um, it's known as DIPG, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the power of prayer and how this community has supported Dana throughout her journey. We'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back. You're watching the girls on SSP TV. If you're just joining us, we're talking with Dana Scanton and her mom, Lenore Scanton, and Dana is courageously battling a rare form of cancer. It's a cancerous brain tumor. It's inoperable, and she's getting treatment as we speak. Treatments are expensive. We talked about that. She's going to Mexico, $11,000 each time she goes. She's been there six times so far, and we aren't stopping until this brain tumor has shrunk down to a size that the doctors are comfortable with. So. We're going to keep you going for that treatment, right? You're a yeah. fighter. God's going to make it disappear, I think, with how close you are with Jesus. I believe it. That's Amen. What That's what we're looking for. We're also going to meet Ari. She's going to be on the show. She's going to be one on January 4th, 2019. She's your little blessing. And I believe your birthday is in January as well. Yep, the 11th. And are, is your birthday January? Because my mom was actually born January 4th. So when this all happened, my mom remembers the dates because it was her birthday as well. Yeah, no, mine's in September. All right, so we're out of, we're out of, the, out of the January loop. Um, the community has been very supportive on a positive note, as I'm not surprised. Uh, this area, very generous and has really come to support you and your journey. So talk about that a little bit, your experience with the community, how they've been supporting mom and, you know, things that you've needed or fundraisers that you've already had. I mean, I haven't been to all the events, but I know that they raised a good amount of money. Yeah. And the ones that I have been, I mean, people will get these, uh, these, ticket, these ticket raffles for like $300 and give it right back to me. I mean, that's just, that's, that's so nice and like, I don't know, I can't explain it. So thank you for everyone yes. who has been helping me. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Mama. <laughs> me too, yes. Um, from the very beginning, our church um, hosted a, a dinner, a family dinner and, and for friends and family. And you know, we just uh, asked everybody to if they could just pray and the, everyone has been praying. And even, even around the world, people have been praying and um, I'm just so very thankful. And I'm hoping to get it to the, the whole world so that they could pray. Not, I mean, it, this is about DIPG, but the, there's so many hurting people that really need to like, just turn to God because He is the answer for everything. And he, I'm glad you brought that up about the DIPG community because your brother JJ has done a great job with updating your Facebook, Pray for Dana. Um, he has connected with the TIPG community. Yes. And it's a small and tight-knit group of, of people, I could imagine. Yes. Yeah. Uh, most of these people have lost loved ones uh, that are our are, are children. Yeah. There's been over 20 children that have passed away since January. Okay, and do you network with these families? Does everyone kind of join together and fight for the cause together? Yes, we do. And uh, we have a, a Monterey chat group and we do um, talk together and they're very supportive in everything. If we have a question, if, they, if we need something, they're very helpful and I'm so thankful for them. I'm especially thankful for um, uh, another woman, Christina Washer, she has, um, she called us in January when she first got diagnosed and it, uh, goes to a lot of the conferences with the doctors to do, um, and is an advocate for the children for research. And uh, from the community support to the support with the DIPG community, um, you have a lot of fundraisers coming up. 
money still has to be raised. Unfortunately, it's sad that we have to worry about raising money when you should be focusing just on treatment and, and getting better. But the reality of, of the world that we live in is we gotta raise money. And up on your screen, Pray For Dana is the Facebook page that her brother updates when there are events. There's also a GoFundMe uh, link on there that you can go on and if you feel so in your heart to uh, donate, you can donate to help Dana and her little cutie pie. <laughs> Who's with us here? I mean, God love you though. I mean, you, you're raising Aries. You have the support of your family. I'm sure that means a lot to you. It really does. <laughs> She's such a blessing to have in my life. I mean, she is the reason why I'm fighting. Well, let's bring her on. Let's bring on Aries. I know we only have a couple more minutes, but you know, I, I was playing with her before and she is just so super, super. Look at her. <laughs> look at this kid when she looks at her mother. The kid just oh lights God. up the world. Come here, baby. And Leanne, thanks for joining us. This is uh, Dana's sister, Leanne Falabella. And who is this? This is little Aries. Hello. You look so, so pretty. Yes, you do. We were taking some selfies earlier and she was just admiring herself and all the lights that we were surrounded by. And what a blessing. I mean, this must be the best medicine for your heart. Because you have no idea. Oh, she brings me up whenever. I mean, she could put a smile on my face at any moment. Usually every morning Dana is sick and um, with a really bad headache so uh, some days I'll just walk in and, and just have her in my arms and she just reaches out to her and just like and, and she does brighten up Dana's day every single day. Dana last words uh, for the, everyone watching if you wanted to you know speak from the heart real quick. Um, I just want to say thank you again I mean seriously it's I mean I wouldn't couldn't have got these treatments without you guys and I really mean that and um, God bless you all. Yeah, well, you're definitely an inspiration. I know when I talked to Leanne yesterday, I was thinking, wow, like, you're 18. And you're, you know, a big role model now. You really are. I don't know if you know how many people out there you're touching with this story, but you really are. <coughs> so we thank you for that. <coughs> and you, we're going to end with all blowing a little raspberries, because that's your favorite thing now, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Uncle now Dana. you won't do it because I want you to, right? Because I want you to. Thank you guys for being on the show. We miss my mama, but uh, she's here in spirit. And thank you.